Three months ago, Hurricane Ian claimed more than 130 lives and left tens of billions of dollars of damage, much of it in Florida. The storm pummeled the vibrant Fort Myers Beach community in this holiday season. The town is now rallying around a rebuilt symbol of hope. Christian Bienvenidas reports from Fort Myers Beach. As residents in Fort Myers Beach celebrate the holiday season, there's no escaping how this year is different. Santa's actually uh, peeking out of our window there. Missing will be Mitch Piscina's extravagant holiday display. That's our garden from up on our deck. Every December, the Chicago native shared online videos of what he and partner Mary created for their adopted town. They felt the need to make sure that they celebrated with everybody and uh, they decorated every year. That's the saddest thing. This is the last video Pasina posted to Facebook. Later, he wrote, we're terrified. Pasina died in Hurricane Ian. Mary and their dog Lulu miraculously survived. The storm wiped out the home where they also hosted a huge community potluck on Christmas Eve. He would make every day a celebration somehow. Um, it's very welcoming as he was, and um, I think he just embodied a lot of what Fort Myers Beach is about. Fort Myers Beach is working to keep that spirit alive. There's so much gray and darkness with the sand and the debris that's still around that, you know, when you come over the bridge, the first thing you see is this big red tree. The poinsettia tree has been a holiday tradition since 1995. The original palm in the center was lost in the storm. The town was determined that this is one tradition that would carry on. Residents and visitors alike started dropping off poinsettia plants at the tree's location. The town found the frame and brought in a new palm tree. Everybody kind of had the same idea that it would be nice to see this tree back. 400 donated poinsettia plants make up this year's display. When you look at the tree, what does it symbolize? It symbolizes the rebirth. It provides hope and and uh, it did it once and it'll do it again. A joyful symbol for a town eager to rebuild. Cristian Benavides, CBS News, Fort Myers Beach. Well, meantime, hundreds of military personnel are home in time for the holidays. That's as the USNS Comfort docked in its home port of Naval Station, Norfolk, Virginia. It's what's known as a hospital ship designed to provide medical care. The USNS Comfort spent the past two months in the Caribbean and Latin America. The crew were providing, pretty busy I should say, providing everything from medication to surgeries for more than 13,000 people. Some of the folks on board are immigrants who got to provide care to people in their home countries. Well, meantime, shopping local this holiday season means so very much for small businesses. In the Bahamas, a recent pop-up market offered the perfect opportunity for shoppers to get their hands on unique locally made products. Our One Caribbean News, DeAndre Hamilton, takes us there. Holiday fun also means holiday shopping and a boost in earnings during this festive season is welcomed, especially for micro-businesses which are continuing to bloom, though the restrictions of the coronavirus pandemic are well relaxed. Entertainment on the stage, dozens of originators of amazing art, craft, food, drinks, beauty, clothing, home, jewelry, and farm products made for a fabulous shopping experience at the Eyes Bahamian pop-up market held in Nassau on Collins Avenue. Well, we got, well, this is the only one I have left because I pretty much sold out everything. This is uh, the 18 ounce jar, which today is on sale for 23, but it's 25. Just changed the price too. So 25, uh, our largest jar is 26 ounces going for 35 and the small jar. You can see these entrepreneurs are excited and confirm support for smaller businesses has never been better. Absolutely. I do see that I am getting the attention. I didn't realize the need for such an authentic product until the pandemic started because there's not many homemade ice cream business owners that actually provide rich, authentic products for families to enjoy. And the Grinch. <laughs> Definitely the Grinch box is the item of the day. What's in there? So we have here snacks. 
Residents poured into the all-day event despite the drizzle here and there and overcast skies and they found amazing variety, excellent quality and many of the delights were organic. Oh, well, we have the and the also the thing where you can let me know on the website. Dressed for the occasion too. So many of these micro-industry creatives can be found on the popular social media apps like Instagram and are happy to accommodate on online orders even outside of Christmas. Well, it definitely gives like more exposure. Like, you know, it's kind of like, you know, hard to DeAndre Hamilton reporting. All right, thanks so much, DeAndre. In the meantime, Grenada, their health minister there, has pleaded with nurses not to leave the country to work elsewhere, as he promised the government was doing all in its power to address their concerns. He made an emotional plea on Tuesday during his contribution to debate on the 2023 estimates of revenue and expenditure in the Senate against the background of concern about the exodus of nurses, among other health care workers. The health minister acknowledged that over the years, nurses have been subject to inconsiderate treatment, and he said the 500 EC dollar honorarium, which they will get that monthly for a year, starting January of 2023, is an apology for that treatment. The health minister also promised that Dick and Mitchell, the administration, was working to resolve their concerns, including poor work conditions, job security, and inadequate compensation. And as he appealed to nurses to afford the new government a chance to do that, he begged them not to leave the country, as he said their mass exodus would cause the health care sector to crumble. We need you. You cannot leave. If you go, our health sector is finished. We understand that you want upward mobility. We have not been able to provide that through successive governments over the years. We know you want betterment for your family. You want your son to go to university, your daughter to attend college. You want to purchase a house. You want a better lifestyle. We are working on how we treat you in 2023 moving forward. But we, the, the olive branch was extended to say to them that you can't leave us at this critical juncture in our healthcare cycle. Yeah, powerful words there. In the meantime, Prime Minister Gaston Brown announced on January 18th of 2023, that will be the date for the fresh general elections in Antigua and Barbuda and urged supporters to ensure that his government is returned to power. The Twin Islands general election is constitutionally Constitutionally, I should say, due in March of 2023. But for months, opposition parties and residents were keenly anticipating the announcement of the date when the country will once again head to the polls. That is because many believe that that date would have come much earlier, with Prime Minister Brown hinting at early elections for quite some time. Brown spoke at the launch of candidates for the ruling Antigua and Barbuda Labour Party, saying that he had already asked the Governor General to issue the rights for the polls on Tuesday. He said nomination day, though, will be December 28th. I dispatched a letter to His Excellency Sir Rodney Williams, asking him to dissolve the Parliament. The Parliament has been duly dissolved. I've also asked our Governor General to issue the writ of elections tomorrow, 20th December 2022. Nomination day will follow on December 28th, 2022. And you can be assured that when the next general elections are held, there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth within the UPP. And that day, that day will be in January, January 18, 2023.